Can bioplastics be marine biodegradable? And if so, can these materials help to mitigate ecological risk? Hello, my name is Heather Nortz, and I'm the Manager of Sustainability and Materials at the Plastics Industry Association. Joining me today are Dan Martins, the Vice President of North America at Novamont, and Brad Rogers, the Vice President of Technology at Danimer Scientific. Thank you both for being here today. Hey, thank you, Heather. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, thank you, Heather. Thanks for having us. Bioplastics have been previously studied for composting and biodegradation in soil, but with some recent studies that came out in 2019, there is now more information on how bioplastics behave in marine environments. Can you both tell us a little bit more about how this research was developed and what the main findings were? Yes, you know, it's interesting, Heather, that uh, the compostable bag was made about 30 years ago and immediately found its home, its, its place to be in composting, collecting food scraps for composting. So that's been studied and for a long time, basically, how does microbial action work on a compostable bag and composting? So that being studied, the next uh, area was for agricultural mulch fill. And then that opened a whole area of how do microbes uh, work with uh, bioplastics or biopolymers in mulch film in the soil. So that had a whole new study of uh, microbial action in soil. And then of course the new frontier was the what if, if it ends up in the marine would be, well, how would things act in the marine environment? So that's just being studied now. However, uh, most, of, uh, most of the learning that we've had from the composting and from the soil are transferable to the marine environment because the microbes are the same, the uh, hydrolyzation is the same, how that breaks down the enzymatic action is the same. So we really have a lot of learning already captured and uh, the research that's being done is really very interesting and kind of exciting of how our materials have, apply to the what if it ends up in the marine environment. Yes, I agree, Dan. The um, marine environment is certainly one of the uh, concerns that people have. What happens if a, uh, a bioplastic does wind up there? Um, and we wanted to ensure that uh, the material that we produce, PHA, um, will biodegrade in that environment. And we did some early uh, work in laboratories, both the OWS laboratories as well as the University of Georgia laboratories, to measure the biodegradation uh, of this material in a marine laboratory environment. Uh, leveraging both ISO and ASTM test methods. Um, these experiments uh, measure the, uh, the CO2 evolution that comes off from biodegradation uh, in that marine environment uh, under those controlled laboratory conditions. And uh, what we showed is that the PHA uh, uh, material does biodegrade in less than one year in that testing environment. Brad, the studies you mentioned were tested in laboratory environments. How can we be certain that these materials break down in all marine environments? Don't they need very specific conditions to fully biodegrade? That's a good question, Heather. Uh, we wanted to prove that even in a cold, uh, real life marine environment, uh, PHA-based materials would biodegrade. Uh, so we partnered with uh, Cal Poly uh, to run some real life testing off the coast of Central California near their, uh, their research center in San Luis Obispo. Uh, film samples and, and straw samples uh, were, were placed into tanks at this experimental station um, and cold marine water from, from below that station were drawn into those tanks and cycled through to simulate what would happen if those uh, materials were actually exposed to that real life uh, marine environment. Um, what we saw from that study was that after, uh, surprisingly, after only about three to four months, uh, these materials fully biodegraded. So even in a cold marine environment, the biodegradation was not really hindered uh, or slowed uh, very much. Um, additionally, we're doing some, some work with Five Gyrus, which is a, uh, an NGO that conducts a lot of uh, testing in the marine environments. Uh, and they're doing uh, testing both uh, shoreline and offshore in the Pacific and Atlantic oceans. Uh, we're expecting to see that data reported later this year. Uh, but early feedback has revealed that uh, the PHA-based samples have performed very well and biodegraded very quickly. Yes, and I, and I can add to that as well. Um, for years, we've seen ad hoc studies done where people have put bioplastics uh, hung off their dock or some other, but it was never really a, a sophisticated scientific study. Um, Novomont completed a study in 2019, which was a three-year study with the Hydra Foundation and the University of Bologna. A report was uh, peer-reviewed, published just last year. And basically it showed that uh, we did in the environment, in the water column, in laboratory tank testing, also sediment testing, 
um, with very, very good results. Um, basically, what we found is that where are there microbes and where are the bioplastics uh, are food or can biodegrade as food for microbes, they will eat it. So uh, it doesn't matter if it's cold or if it's warm, if the microbes are there. And, and that's why we always say, you know, even in the most frigid of waters, we don't have, uh, you know, stacks of dinosaurs piled up above the, the sea level. You know, they will eat them. And as long as our materials are viewed as food for microbes, they will also be biodegraded and eat. Of course, our shared goal is to figure out a system in which manufactured material stays out of the environment in the first place. Would certifying a product as marine biodegradable signal to consumers that it's okay to throw it into the ocean? Well, Heather, there's actually uh, no evidence or studies to suggest that improper disposal of items is uh, given any thought at all. Uh, actually, it's kind of a thoughtless uh, act where people are not reading labeling or not following through on where things should go. So that's why we thought it was so important that we find out what the impact of our materials have on the marine environment, because we look at it as a safety belt. It's the what if. What if it uh, goes from the land into the sea? Just like nobody puts a safety belt on expecting to have an accident, but if they do have an accident, they know the impact will be less, and we want our materials to have uh, a minimal uh, environmental impact in the marine environment as well. Very good point, Stan. Uh, littering is not a disposal method for anything, including food waste, yard waste, or any other compostable materials. Uh, they should be properly managed through a, a well-run composting facility. Um, but we all know that some packages may leak into the environment inadvertently, uh, you know, whether it blows out of the back of your truck or, or off your golf cart or, or, or just flies out of your trash can. Um, so it, it's good to know that these materials will not persist in the environment. Uh, for decades or even centuries, like some of the conventional plastics do today. Thank you both so much for taking the time today. Thanks, Heather. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Heather. Really appreciate being here today. Absolutely. This is a subject of a lot of interest, and we get many questions about it. So for the audience to learn more about marine biodegradability of bioplastics, follow along on social media with hashtag BioplasticsWeek.